So Jonathan Taylor has been given permission to seek a trade. Um, who do we think is going to trade for Jonathan Taylor? That's exactly and, what I was thinking. I know. And, and what? Are, first of all, are, are they going to get what they what they're asking for? What the asking price is? What they believe the trade value is for Jonathan Taylor? That's the question. Yeah. Well, he's he's also coming off you know a nagging right ankle injury that required surgery in January. Um, you he's twenty four, so he's, he's not twenty four. He's not geriatric yet at running back. You're geriatric when you turn like twenty seven. So, <laughs> well, you there's, got like there's, three more years before he becomes basically an old man at running back. Well, a lot of people are comparing it to last year's trade when Christian McCaffrey was shipped to San Francisco, <laughs> and the haul in the midseason trade with Carolina and and San Fran was for twenty twenty three second round pick, twenty twenty three third round pick, twenty twenty three fourth round pick, and a fifth round pick this coming in April. Mm. So four picks. I don't know if you're going to get that. Uh and I think that, <laughs> I think the difference would be that Christian McCaffrey had he'd already signed his second his first big contract after his rookie deal and Carolina had already picked up a lot of that you know, original signing bonus. Mm. So one of the reasons Kyle Shanahan and the Niners and John Lynch were willing to trade for it is they were picking up, you know, a good amount of money but at the same time, you know, Carolina had already absorbed the biggest part of that contract for Christian McCaffrey. Um, and in this case, Jonathan Taylor, if you trade for him, he wants that big deal. And I will also say this, just from a football standpoint, if you look at Shanahan's philosophy offensively, he covets players like Christian McCaffrey. He's perfect for that scheme. He's into positionless football. He's got a Kyle Juszczyk. He's got Kittle. He's got Debo Samuel, who's a wide receiver slash running back, and Christian McCaffrey, who's a running back that can play wide receiver. So, I don't know what system out there covets Jonathan Taylor as much as I know Shanahan coveted a guy like Christian McCaffrey in his skill set for his system. Yeah, and there's a, there was a, a relationship with the McCaffrey family. and, and a, Yes, a lot of get the, All great the way point. back to Denver point. when he was a ball boy. Didn't even think about that. With his dad, Another Ed. One. Yeah, yeah. And so there was kind of a perfect storm it, to, your, exactly. to your question of who's who is going to be interested in Jonathan Taylor. Clearly, in that case, Kyle Shanahan looked at it and said, you know what? John Lynch, they've already signed into the to the big deal. They've absorbed a lot of that money. This is the the final piece, for the me, final yeah, piece yep. for my offense with Debo Samuel and George Kittle and obviously Brock Purdy at quarterback. But at the time, it was Jimmy Garoppolo, and you know that that, that made sense. I, I I'm I'm looking around the other 32 teams in the NFL or 31 teams from the Colts and wondering, is there a perfect fit? And because that that team whoever acquires him, because this is the irony from the Colts side of it, Rod. And folks, I mean, this is this is why running backs are frustrated, and in a lot of cases, rightfully so, with the market, they can't do anything about it. But it's it's unfortunate because the Colts have spent the off season telling Jonathan Taylor he's not worth what he's asking for, <laughs> and now they're going to ask for a lot to trade him. Yeah. So it's like, wait a second, what is it there, Colts? I mean, okay, if you're going to trade me, then I'm, you, basically with no contract extension, you're telling me I'm worth a fifth round draft pick or something. Yeah. Uh, no, they want a first. They, they want a first. first. They will. They will. Exactly. Uh, they think he's worth that kind of value on the open market, well, which that, he's not actually. Well, it's, it's not him. The running back position isn't necessarily worth no. that kind of value yeah. anymore. I mean, they've had Zoom calls and they're trying to buck the <laughs> economic trends, but it is. But that I don't know that there's be much market for that. I would imagine his agent now with permission from the team, so it won't be tampering for another team. Will put out feelers, but I just there doesn't seem to be a fit. Now that that could change. It takes one team. To jump in there and say, man, he's too good. He's 24 years old, uh, all pro in 2021, great young player. But I'm with you. I don't know that there's going to be a really strong market for Jonathan Taylor. There already is some buzz, though, uh, for this one team. Uh, according to uh, Florida Sports Buzz, Barry Jackson, who's with the uh, Miami Herald, he covers uh, South Florida Sports, he's claiming that the Dolphins Ooh. actually may, they're expected to at least explore a trade for Jonathan Taylor. Now we don't. I don't know if they'll give up a first round pick, but they'll explore and try to see if maybe they could come to some middle ground compromise. That would be scary. Uh, Jonathan Taylor in that offense, that'd be a scary proposition. But I'm assuming he's going to want a long term deal. That's right. That's, so he's not only you got to work out the trade with the team. I believe he's going to. He wants his mark. That's why they. That's why they're giving him permission to seek a trade. He wants what he believes is his market value in a long term deal with some stability. So that's it's two parts to it. Yeah. Are they going to be able to meet his demand in that way too? Well, and you wonder if they can play hardball with the Colts and say, "Look, I mean, we'll give you a, a, as this texter on the Specs text line says a third and a fourth round pick this year, but that's not we have to we have to sign him. You don't want to." 
You don't want to. Yeah, um, we got to give up salary cap capital and draft capital. <laughs> but look, he fits to what Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins want to do. He's you know, at the Combine, he ran 4-3. He's a track star in high school. He, mm-hmm. he can join the track team in Miami. Ooh. And you know that the Dolphins are itchy. I mean, they they went for it with the Tyreek Hill trade. They wanted Dalvin Cook, didn't work out. Dalvin Cook ended up with the Jets. Now, that one's interesting uh, because mm-hmm. uh, Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins do feel like and that division is so damn competitive. What about the Cowboys? Well, what about the Cowboys? I don't I don't <laughs> think Jerry Jones would do that. But... Jerry, don't do it, Jerry. Don't do it. Don't well, do it, Jerry. Don't do it. Except for, except for Christian don't McCaffrey, who the Carolina Panthers subsequently traded the last rook, you know, Big big name on a, on a rookie deal to get that next big contract with Zeke Elliott, right? I mean, Zeke got the big money, and the Cowboys regretted that move from the minute that they uh, they gave it to him. So, and that's where Jonathan Taylor is. He wants that next big deal. This is the point at which, if you're paralleling it with the Cowboys, that Zeke went to Cabo and said, "I'm going to Cabo. Mm-hmm. I'll train in Mexico and I'll get my deal." Jonathan Taylor has been in a similar stalemate with uh, Jim Irsay and the team since. And I'd say this for the Colts. This is a hard stance they're taking because they have already announced that young Anthony Richardson is going to be their starting quarterback. Mm, yep, uh, He needs every weapon he can get. Oh, running game is the best friend for a young QB. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Good running game. I mean, it, defenses are much more scared by Michael Pittman at receiver and J- uh, Jonathan Taylor in the backfield than Zach Moss in the backfield or someone else. That makes the job harder on your young quarterback. But they're holding the financial line at this point, and we'll see if a team crops up. And, boy, that would – I would add another subplot to the uh, to the AFC and the AFC East if the Miami Dolphins were to get involved. I do think there could be a trade or a couple of teams interested. I doubt very seriously they get what they're demanding. And Stephen Holder, who uh, covers uh, the Colts, he says the Colts are seeking a first round pick or a package of picks that equates to a first round value. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I don't know what the, the third, maybe a third and a second equates to a first round value. I'm not sure exactly where they are on the draft value chart, but there you go. So they want a first. I don't think they're gonna get a first. I mean, I keep going back to hell, Lamar Jackson. The the Ravens gave him permission to seek a trade, and it was the what the non exclusive franchise tag. So two first round picks. I think you'd have to give up, and they could have matched the deal. And they were crickets. And he was just a running quarterback. And there were crickets. He's talking about an MVP in his prime. Crickets. Nobody wanted to go. Matter of fact, there were teams openly, all right, openly opposed to uh, even exploring a trade, right? You had, you had owners and you had GMs coming out saying, nah, we're not, uh, we're, we're not exploring the uh, Lamar Jackson trade. It's like, you don't even have a quarterback. How could you? That's actually, for, on your part as a GM, right, that's malpractice. Yeah. You should be exploring it even if your situation is stable or not just to see what the value is of it. But either way, that's why I don't think he's going to get you know, the first round pick. I do think a team may explore a trade for him, but... Yeah, Jim Irsay and the Colts know what they're doing. This is like when my wife gives me a hall pass to go bang Beyonce, and she's like, "Yeah, you can go if you if you if you can convince Beyonce to to have sex with you, then yes, then I I can I have, I have permission from my wife to do it. She knows it's never gonna happen. She knows <laughs> the odds are remote, and that's why she's like, "Oh yeah, that's why her my celebrity hall pass list is really long because my wife is like, yes, you can you can have that. <laughs> you could but you could but it's I know you won't. The market will reject you." <laughs> And if you actually <laughs> somehow accomplished it, you might as well, oh. not, come, might as well not come back. <laughs> yeah. No, I think if I accomplish it, I'll call it. I'm going to call it and be like, you said it wasn't going to happen. I'm going to taunt her with it. Yeah. <laughs> you said it wouldn't happen. You can come on. She loves Beyonce, so she'll probably want to join in. Well, I would say. also add this to the, uh, <laughs> to the conversation. Jonathan Taylor was not even a first-round pick himself. He was a second-round pick. Exactly. Pick 41 overall. Come on. I mean, he was a great player at Wisconsin. He, you know, at 225 pounds, he did run 4.39 at the combine. He's a very That's talented freaky. player. Yeah. He's freaky, and he would fit the Dolphins and make them even scarier. Um, but we'll see. That I think you're right. He's he's going to seek a trade and seek what the market is, and we'll see what that looks like. But, yeah, and that looked like for you fantasy football owners and fantasy football drafts are fast approaching or maybe you've already had yours. It does look like Josh Jacobs will be in with the Raiders when – the game season begins. He's not been a part of anything that they've done. He led the the league in rushing last year, uh, but you know he hadn't he hadn't been in training camp. What kind of shape is he going to be in when he gets there? They play the Broncos week one. Uh, you know you can decide the value of Josh mm. Jacobs for your fantasy football team, but he, he's going to be there according to the Las Vegas Review Journal when they play Denver to start the season. It's hard so. out there for a running back these days, man. It's tough, it's tough, tough. Uh, Underappreciated, undervalued, underpaid. 
Yeah. Look, it says, I think the Colts are making a mistake by trading Jonathan Taylor. There are no, they have no other running back. And that's the issue, right? It's like, well, and you wonder if you're the Dolphins, if you're the Colts, could you trade Jonathan Taylor for a second round pick and one of the Dolphins running backs, right? Could you get Jeff Wilson or could you get Raheem Mostert? In return, because that's a good one. yeah, the, you know, something serviceable, something that's I mean, Raheem yeah. Mostert's a pretty good player. Oh yeah, um, you know, or even A Chain, yeah, A Chain, who you just drafted. Uh, I think they like him out of A and M, but yes, that was a third round pick of theirs this year. So you know, there could be players involved, and if you're, you know, I don't know, after what what Jim Arce pulled last year, I don't know what to believe and what he won't do. I mean, whole, <laughs> yeah, Jim Arce's a wild card. You don't know, really have with you on that one. Don't I think mean, you'll be able to predict what he's going to do. I think there's a football element to this too, gentlemen. You talk about, you know, Shane Steichen coming over from the Eagles and what he was able to do with Jalen Hurts. These days, more and more, you're seeing more and more teams adopt and adapt to running quarterbacks, whether it be, uh, you know, kind of functional mobility or guys who are just straight up dual threat quarterbacks. And they are a huge part of the running game now. Uh, actually, design runs for quarterbacks uh, for the first time in history, or at least since they've been actually keeping up with it, for the first time since they've been keeping up with it, probably the last 10 years, they actually now are uh, design runs are higher and quarterbacks are involved in more design runs than scrambles. Uh, I love that. So well, and Shane yeah. Steichen is, comes in from so, Philadelphia yeah. where he helped tutor and mentor Jalen Hurts and build that offense around his legs and arm. So it, it meant, my point is it makes a star running back less valuable yeah, in right. an offense like that because i got a quarterback that can supplement the running game. Well, and if you – I mean, you know, Anthony Richardson goes 6'5", five and six, <sighs> five, 250 yeah. and runs over safeties. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes, that is uh, an intriguing conversation in the NFL with uh, one more preseason game to go and then we're off to the real deal.